Have you ever wanted to create a concept for your architectural project but you kept running in circles without knowing where to start from? In this tutorial, I'll explain how to create an architectural concept for your project in a very short and simple way but with the full details. Just keep watching to know where to start from. And welcome back to Tips with Mona. If you haven't seen me before, hi, my name is Mona Abu Fayyad. I'm an architect and a designer. On this channel, I explain some architectural and designing tips and tricks. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so. You will get so many informations on this platform. Don't forget to like, share, and comment on this video. But for now, let's jump into the video. One of the most important questions that any architect should know how to answer if they were asked is what is the concept behind your project? And the answer could be literally anything. It's just a tricky question, but you have to know how to prepare for this question and how to work in a right flow to answer this question. Architectural concept can be literally anything, but to make it simple to you, I'd like to give you two categories of the concept. Your concept could be emotional or functional, as simple as it is. If we're talking about the emotional side of the concept, then your concept could be inspired from something that you see and you feel that your building or your project could be connected to this thing that you are seeing. For example, let's say that your emotional concept is about a bird and you want to make your building look like a bird and then you should start connecting why you want your building to look like a bird maybe the location of your building for example is located in a place where birds are always gathering there or maybe the city is well known for birds maybe the function of this building is connected to birds and that's how you should connect it you should find something to connect the emotional idea and the building and also the functions to the building so you start from a shape and then you start developing the concept until you know how to apply the functions to this emotional concept this is a very strong point you have to find a connection between the shape and the function because the shape after all won't be as a strong idea if you don't connect it with your functions so just don't let the shape affect you in a way to design your building just take an inspiration from the shape and then connect it to your ideas and then start developing the concept and the functions in a way that will make a very strong idea and concept and believe me this could be a very strong and tricky way of thinking but now let's go to the other way of thinking the functional concept your concept could be fully functional it could rely totally on the functions of the building that you are trying to accomplish for example you can take advantage of the location of your project or sun direction from the wind direction from the country that you're building this building at maybe the weather maybe the spaces that we need in this building and from this point you start developing your idea in a very strong and functional way in this direction you have to think in the functions that we need and the aspects that you have and you should apply everything together get the final result and also this direction could be really strong because it fully relies on the functions of the project it really depends both directions totally correct you're so free and as i said in the beginning that there is no right or wrong way and there is no certain way to define the definition of concept but let me tell you that you have to go in minimum of three steps to produce your concept so to develop your concept you have to go through three main steps first point is the site analysis it's a very very important point second point is the design brief the third point is the narrative and i'll go through each one of these points in details but in a very simple way now so 
The first and the most important point is the site analysis. You have to explore the site. You have to explore the site that your building is going to be located at. You have to check the weather, you have to check the sunlight, wind direction, the temperature all through the year. Don't just focus on one season. Provide a study for the whole year. Check the temperatures, check the humidity, check everything that might affect your building concept. Dive into the site, check the surroundings. You also need to check what landmarks are around your site. You have to check if this is a good place to place your building or it's a poor place. Or maybe if it is a poor place, just think how to enhance it. You have to check also the roads. It's a very important point. You have to check the way that your users are gonna reach the building. Is it easy to be accessed or it's hard? Or what do you need to do? And how to enhance the experience of going to your building. And one main point that you should not forget is to check the setbacks regulation. You have to check with your country codes if you need to have setbacks, uh, how many meters you have to leave from the side, the roadside, or from the seaside if you have a seaside, or from the neighborhood if you have neighborhood. This is one of the most important points that many students maybe forget about. The second point is gonna be the design brief. So basically the design brief is something that you should be handed from your client. In the design brief you will find the client's desires, needs, the required programs, the areas for each space and how they want to divide them and what they need in their project. You need to absorb each and every detail in this design brief. You should know what's inside it. You have to start thinking and analyzing the design brief. It will make your life so much easier if you understand it very well from the beginning. The design brief is something that will make you think in a very clear and big way. It will really make you draw the idea and concept of your project in a very fast way in your mind if you really understand it. Because after understanding your design brief, believe me that you can start sketching. Your concept will be so fully visualized in your head and you can start sketching your concept. It won't be as hard as if you don't understand your design brief. So please understand it before you move to point number three, which is narrative. Narratives. In this step, you should be fully aware how to tell your story about your building. So at this point, you should be able to write a storyline of your concept and this story should have the explanation of the theory of your concept as well as the functions of your concept and who it will serve how are the places and spaces are going together and how much you achieved of the areas that are required and the spaces that the client needs and what sacrifices you made to create this project and who will this building really serve. At this point, after following these three steps, after deciding if your concept is going to be emotional or functional, at this point, you have to be able to produce bubble diagrams for your project. You have to start thinking how you're going to arrange the spaces, how your plan is going to look like, it's just like a game, how to place things, how you move rooms and how you do stuff. It's really important to start doing bubble diagrams because after bubble diagrams, you can start translating your bubble diagrams into plans or maybe models. So if you like to start your project from architectural plans or drawings, you can absolutely start from there. But if you think that you can start your concept from 3D models, it's okay as well. Many architects do that as well. You can start making the model and then produce plans and keep enhancing and editing in parallel. So this is totally fine. And at the end, I really want to advise you one thing. Keep looking, keep exploring, keep reading, keep looking at the website. Architecture is not a thing that you learn for one time. Architecture is a thing that every day has something new. Every day has something really 
amazing that we didn't know from before. I personally learn a new information every day from the internet. We have a free source. Why don't we just read and look around us, look wherever you live. It doesn't matter how small where you live or how big where you live or how commercial where you live. And the most important thing is to check the new things and the new technologies that we have. It's just like fashion. You have to keep exploring to know what's the trend. You have to learn new things, but please don't forget about your architectural ethics and how you should be loyal in designing and you have to serve this community that you live at. I hope this video answers some of your questions and wonders around the concept. If you have any question, please don't forget to ask me in the comment section below. And please don't forget to subscribe, like, share and hit the notifications bell on. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.